busted and you feel like giving up Never been tired, can't get no sleep Worry about how you gonna eat Bills are too laid off from work Trying to cope from all the Does black health matter? Absolutely Just like black lives matter and white lives matter and Asian lives matter, black health matters. It's very, very important, but it's something that we aren't putting enough emphasis on. You know, African Americans within the Western context are always the last ones to be given the things that are needed. And so need of giving examples, but that's just the reality of this country that we're living in. Per CDC, the top five lead, leading causes of death are heart disease, cancer, uh, lower respiratory issues, accidents are coming in at four, and stroke at number five. And what's sad is that African Americans are leading in virtually every single category. Okay gang, just some information for you. The work cited is the NAACP.org, as you can see. Number one, look at the health disparities amongst African Americans. Number one, HIV and AIDS. When we look at HIV and AIDS by race and ethnicity, we see that African Americans have one more illness. Blacks, including African Americans, account for 13% of the United States population and about 49% of people who get HIV and AIDS are African Americans. Shorter survival rates. Blacks with AIDS often don't live as long as people of other races with AIDS. Two, heart disease. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for African Americans. African Americans are 13% of the population, nearly twice that die from heart disease each year. Diabetes and hypertension, number three. 3.7 million of all African Americans aged 20 years or older have diabetes. Blacks are 1.5 times more likely to contract diabetes than whites. Obesity, adult obesity. African Americans have the highest rates of obesity. 51% higher prevalence of obesity compared to whites. 53% of African American women and 36% of African American men are obese. Childhood obesity, 18.5% of African American boys are obese, that's slightly higher than that of whites. 27.7% of African American girls are obese, that's nearly two times that of whites. We're the first ones to die of, of heart attacks, first ones to die of stroke. When you look even at diabetes, we're leading in every chronic illness that has been deemed a killer within the Western context. And to any person who is who hears this, any African American or descendant of African people or whatever you look upon yourself, the first question that we need to ask ourselves is why? Why are we dying first? Why are we the first ones to have heart attacks, strokes, chronic illnesses? Now, something could happen to myself, to any other person at any given time. We never know. But preventable diseases, primarily the ones that have been listed, why are we dying more than any other demographic of individuals within this country? Well, in order to answer that question thoroughly, that small question why, then we have to look upon it in a thorough type of way. There's a book written by a Dr. Peter D. Adamo. And the name of that book is called Eat Right for Your Blood Type. And it's important that we start here. And this was a great piece, not saying that every part of it is, is true or not, but you know, knowledge is power. And I was definitely able to deem a lot of information within this book. And I think that it's a good book for any person to read. Within the book, uh, the author chronicles and basically justifies an argument that people need to be eating based upon their blood type. Now, what you have to understand is who you are or the way your genes express themselves have nothing to do with you being born on the south side of Chicago or southwest Atlanta or uh, Watts in Los Angeles or Mississippi 
or wherever you're from. All right, the way our genes express themselves are much more archaic and ancient than where we were born. But it's basically the region of where your genes and your ancestors, their domain and where they came from. So it's not just you, but your genes are expressing themselves from a vantage point of your ancestors, your great, 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 all the way back 10, 15, 20 plus thousand years ago. And within this book, the author basically makes the argument that we need to have an understanding of where we come from in order to understand what we need to eat. So this is great for us to ask the question why, because it starts by understanding where we come from. Now, the oldest group in the world in terms of the oldest uh, recorded group of individuals are a group of individuals in Africa called the San. And these individuals are the oldest chronicled historical groups of individuals in the world. And black people are the oldest group of individuals, historically speaking, in the world. So we have some of the oldest blood because all other bloodlines come from individuals who were born in Africa. Many different um, evolutionary biologists have deemed that statement to be true, okay, in many different ways. Now, in understanding that and understanding how we can get to the, to the genesis of that question, why? Why are we leading in every cause of death? It starts with understanding that. Number one, when you look at Africans, the first thing that we have to understand is the vast majority of our ancestors, when you look at the region of where they come from, adopt a primarily plant-based diet. So when I say plant-based diet, this is what I am referencing. 70 to 80% of what we eat needs to look like this. It needs to be foods that come from what you're seeing on this list, fruits and vegetables, all right? Plant-based means that the base of your diet, all right, this is how I'm defining it, are fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. If you're going to eat meat, it needs to make up a smaller percentage. 30, 20 to 30 percent of your diet needs to be something besides plants or fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. So this is the image of what your diet needs to look like, okay? Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds. Just ingrain that within your mind. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. The majority of what we eat needs to look like this, all right? The more we can do that, the healthier we're going to be. Right? The more we can incorporate these types of foods as the base of our diets, the better it's going to be. Now, whenever you make your plate, this is what it needs to look like, all right? This is a good image. 80% of it, alkaline forming foods. What's that? Plant-based things, fruits, vegetables, all right? plant-based alkaline forming foods. Acidic foods are what? Meats, cheese, dairy. So if you incorporate it, it needs to be a smaller percentage of what it is that you are ingesting. Now look to see the statistics, the fascinating statistics. If you look on the left, the red line are basically percentage of deaths from heart disease and cancer. The green is percentage of calories from unrefined plant foods. The more plant-based diets or the higher th that number is, the lower the heart disease and cancer and vice versa. All right. The higher the plant-based diet, lower the cancer, lower the, the higher the cancer rates is a direct correlation with individuals who are not eating plant-based foods. So that is an explanation of what I mean by plant-based diet. So that means that Although I'm living in the 21st century, all right, 2016, being the child and the son or an offspring of a person of color of African descent, my genes and my body is going to respond positively to those same foods that sustained our ancestors 20 plus thousand years ago. So if it was good enough for them to eat a plant-based diet primarily, 
then it's good enough for me. So the first thing that we as descent of Africans need to adapt is 70 80 percent of our diet needs to be plant based fruits and vegetables. Virtually every disease would instantly be obliterated if we did just that alone. When we can consume meat, we have to be mindful of the type of meats that our ancestors ate. Now, in America, when you go to a steakhouse, everybody wants marbleization because they say in fat comes flavor, you know, um, pork bacon and ribeyes and uh, fatty meats. That's what the American connoisseur, the American diet desires. But naturally speaking, Many of the meats that are in the West are fat because they have been artificially fattened by what? Corn. All right, gang, I wanted to show you this picture so you'll see exactly what I'm saying for clarity. There are two types of steak, same cut, but you can see the steak on the left has more fat. If you look at the white parts or what they call marbleization, the steak on the right is a lot leaner. Now, the steak on the left is corn fed. The steak on the right is grass fed. When cows and livestock are eating grass, they're always leaner, right? In ancient Africa, if meat products were eaten, it more than likely looked like the cut on the right versus the left, period, point blank. When we're selecting meat products, the type of meat that your body more than likely as descendant of an African person of color of African descent, your body holistically is going to respond better to leaner cuts in tandem with a plant-based diet. We as African Americans have to stay out of restaurants. Number three, we as African Americans have to learn we cannot sustain ideal health when we are eating restaurant foods. And the reason why is because when you look at what restaurants put in their foods to make it taste good, they are two entities that are killing us, us as African Americans, quicker than anything else. And when you go to a restaurant, the two things they're putting in to make the food taste good, salt and fat. Sugar kills everybody, but primarily salt and fat is what's killing us. African Americans, our genes, do not express themselves in a way to where we can handle high levels of fat in our diet. When you look to see where we are from, that is not the type of diet that our genes positively respond to. Now you look at our Caucasian brothers and sisters who come from colder climates. There was one young lady who became a vegan and when she became a vegan, she was Caucasian, very fair, red hair, from Russia, she became deathly ill. Her blood count dropped, her immune system was compromised. When a doctor did studies on her blood, it was discovered that this young lady came from a village or her ancestors came from a village where their, prim their primary diet was meat, dairy, and fatty uh, meats and animals. They reverted her diet from being a vegan to eating the types of foods that her body responded to. Her health bounced back like that. We as African Americans, primarily speaking, do not do well on high fat diets. We need a plant based diet full of fruits and vegetables. And if we are incorporating meat, it needs to be 30% or less than our total diet. And those meats need to be lean. Well, gang, I hope you enjoyed that presentation, Black Health Matters. Don't forget, number one, plant-based diet. Number two, 
if you incorporate meats into your diet. They need to be leaner cuts of meat. Number three, be certain that you prepare the vast majority of your meals. 80 plus percent of what you put in your temple needs to be prepared by your own hands. Let's not forget this as we do our best to optimize our health and wellness. Now, it's important that we sustain a healthy lifestyle, not just in eating the right things or knowing the right things, but it's important that we get this body moving. Come with me as we go to a special Club 326 Fitness where I'll be your personal trainer for the day. 326 Fitness is next. What's happening family? Dr. Joe here and today we don't have a guest, we've got me. You're going to be working out with me and I'm going to be your personal coach and trainer on today. Welcome to 326 Fitness. Well gang, if you've been tuning in like I know you have, all of our guest trainers have been doing different workouts and exercises that will reach a myriad of individuals, a myriad of different fitness levels as well. On today, I'm going to be presenting something to you called HIT training, H-I-I-T. That stands for High Intensity Interval Training. Now, the objective of this is to start at a point and a place that makes you comfortable. And over time, you want to increase the intervals or the amount of repetitions and decrease the rest periods between each of those intervals. Let me tell you the four exercises that I'm going to be taking you through today. Exercise number one, 30 to 50 yard wind sprints. I say 30 to 50 yards because you can allow your space and what you have access to to dictate if it's 30 yards or 50 yards. Exercise number two are burpees. This has a lot to do with air, space, and land. Exercise number three are shuttle runs. Exercise number four are jump squats. Well, gang, I hope you enjoyed working out with me. I know I enjoyed working out with you. Remember, HIT training, high intensity interval training. Start at an intensity level that fits you and where you are. And over time, you want to increase the intervals or the repetitions and decrease the amount of rest time. This has been proven to maximize fat burn and it allows you to maximize efficiency and time. That means if you don't have a lot of time, if you're traveling, if you got a gym membership, but you don't have time to go today, HIIT training is an exercise for you. Now, you don't just wanna focus on exercising, but it's about eating right as well. So come over to me to 326 Kitchen, so I'll show you what I'm cooking up on today. Peace. What's happening, family? Welcome to day four of Club 326, where for the entire week, I've used $68, $3.26 cent per meal to show you that eating healthily can be affordable, sustainable, and most importantly, tasty. Welcome to day four. I wanna switch things up a little bit here in the kitchen. We've been inside, but I said, you know, it's a nice day outside. Why don't we show people how versatile this lifestyle is? Not only is it quick and easy, uh, all of the meals that you've seen have taken, in essence, 10 minutes or less. And that's great because it means that it can work in the life of any busy American. Let's take things outside, switch things up a minute, because now I'm going to make for you barbecue grilled chicken over a bed of green lettuce and vegetables. I look forward to it. Let's see how it turns out. All right, gang, here we are. And here are 
the items that we'll be using. We've got our whole chicken. Of course, this isn't, isn't going to be for just one meal, but it's going to be multiple preparations, and you'll hear more about that. Um, I know I said chicken and veggies, but I said, you know what? Let's take some of these pre-made black beans and brown rice, some barbecue chicken. Let's make it Jamaican style. I'm feeling Jamaican. I'm going to show you how to do it for $3.26. Got our field greens there, and I've got some um, marinade that's just laying around the house. And I'm going to show you exactly how I use this so we can get a tasty meal. So let's go over our macros. Protein, that's in the chicken. Carbs, we've got the black beans, the rice, as well as the greens and the fats will be some naturally occurring in the chicken and in the skin. All right, that's fine, that's healthy as long as it's done in a balanced way. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. All right, gang, so the chicken has been prepped, it's been cleaned, and you can at this point, a sharp knife. The backbone kind of runs down the chicken. Trying to remove this. As you can see, <clears throat> the chicken is flat, and this is how you want it. All right. well, with it being flat like this, it's going to help it cook quickly. And I can season it on both sides. Seasoning is very simple. Watch how easy this is. Use your favorite seasoning. I like the New Orleans Spice Rub. Just take it. Use whatever you want. Jerk marinade laying around. And all I'm gonna do is just take my brush, marinade, and I'm going to paint it on. Do the same thing on the back side. Just pour it on. Right, going Jamaican style again. Jamaican style. Notice gang how all of the coals are on one side. That's the indirect method. All right, all the coals are here. Cool side on this side. And you barbecuers know where I'm going with this. We're gonna put the chicken here, sear it on both sides, and then move it to the cooler side so it can finish cooking. All right, so I just wanna show you that before we move forward. We got him on the grill gang. I'm going to leave him on the hot side, flip him when I get that good brown color, then I'll move it to the cooler side. Alright gang, so we're back in the kitchen. The chicken is off the grill. Let me show you what it looks like. Bam! How good does that look? Now, when we were looking at our chicken, we got the whole chicken. This is going to feed us, all right, or me, or you, for several days, okay? Now, today's recipe is Jamaican chicken, black bean, rice, brown rice, and a mixed salad, all right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to start with the legs, let it rest a bit. How good does that look? Get in there, look at the crust. How amazing does that look? All right, tomorrow we'll work with the breast. Then we'll think of something to do on day six. All right, so let me get it plated up and see what it, what it looks like. There it is guys, look how that turned out. Man, we've got Jamaican peas and rice garnished with a homemade peach jerk salsa just some things I had laying around we've got the Jamaican jerk chicken on a bed of lettuce proteins carbs and fats there it is gang three dollars and twenty six 
sense. Well, gang, there it is. Jamaican peas and rice garnished with a homemade peach and jerk salsa. We've got the bed of fresh greens and the Jamaican jerk barbecue chicken fresh off of the grill game. Listen, it doesn't get in, but look how amazing that looks. Look at that, all right? That's restaurant quality game, $3.26. Eating healthily is not gonna send you to the poor house. You can eat healthily, tasty, sustainable foods. All right, if you're a college student in between jobs, fixed income, it does not matter. This lifestyle is for you, Club 326. We're gonna go to some tips and tricks to help you save money. So this lifestyle can be something that becomes a part of your daily life and your daily existence. But before we go there, let's see how it tastes. All right, gang, a lot of manufacturers try to control demand on certain days. And what they'll do to do this is give you different incentives for different days. So when I was getting all of my groceries, I noticed that I was able to get far better deals on a Monday over against a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. So be certain that you look at the coupon books, at the apps, at the online places for various deals because when I got to the register, not only did I spend less than 68 bucks, but I spent far less than $68, and that's the reason why. So when you maximize your coupons on various days, you'll save at the cash register. Now, many times in life when you look around and you see all of the things that you don't have, it's very, very easy to panic, to worry. How am I going to make my mortgage payment, my rent payment? How am I going to keep food on the table? How am I going to feed the hungry mouths of my own children? Listen, it's easy to worry. It's easy to be afraid and to live a life of fear. But what you have to understand is, whenever you're worrying, it's impossible to have faith in God. You have to choose one. You're either going to do one or the other. Let me give you a word from the Lord. Matthew chapter six, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto thee. Basically, it means that through this scripture and through this wonderful truth and reality, there's never a need for us to worry about anything. When we keep our focus on the kingdom of God, doing what has been asked of us, fulfilling our purpose, treating people right, being obedient to the word of the Lord. What this scripture is telling us, we don't have to worry about these things because all that we need, God will sustain us. He promises us that his grace is sufficient. In our weakness, he says, my strength is made perfect. Well, gang, as you all know, I want to stay connected with you. Each morning I post inspirational messages on Facebook. You can connect with me there at Truth Knowledge Light. If you're looking for a wonderful transformative process, a great detox formula, you can connect with us and visit ForMyJourney.com. If you're ever in the greater Atlanta area and you're looking for a church home, a place to worship, I want to invite you to the place of peace where the senior pastor is my father, Jasper W. Williams Jr. And I'm the pastor, Dr. Joseph L. Williams. And we pastor a wonderful church in the greater Atlanta area. One ministry in two locations, Lithonia, Georgia and Atlanta called Salem Bible Church. Visit us at SalemBibleChurch.org. Well, gang, this particular presentation would not be complete if I didn't challenge you 
You saw that wonderful meal, that Jamaican style jerk chicken and vegetables. I want you to do your best. Have some fun with it. I went outside and started things off on the grill. Why don't you do the same? If you don't want to do it outside, do it inside. If you don't like chicken, use another lean protein of your choice. Perhaps you want to mix it up and use some fish. The key is to prepare your own meals. Get in the habit of preparing the meals that go on the inside of your own vessel. That's your challenge this week. Now, you want to be certain that you post things up in our closed Facebook group. You can do it at www.join326.club. Be certain that you hashtag it with hashtag club326. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Share it with your family members and your friends. And we'll see you next week, same time, same place, Monday at 3 to 6 p.m. We'll see you then. Peace and blessings. Don't cry, dry your eyes.